take one video genocide so let's go genocide against the tutsis or the rwandan genocide what is the right terminology this is a question that no one asks here in rwanda well because it's obvious that these two terminologies mean two totally different things however there are other rwandans and also non-rwandans who mostly live outside of rwanda who do use the latter terminology to be more neutral or for some other political reasons and then there is another group of rwandans who are mostly young like me who grew up or are growing up outside of rwanda who are extremely undereducated about this topic and don't feel comfortable talking about this topic because of the various mixed information out there this video is for those rwandans who are truly seeking education about this topic and not division reka tutangire Welcome back my wonderful people, nice to see you came back to my YouTube channel. In today's video I'm talking about a highly sensitive topic that is not easy to talk about, especially in this month that we're in. However, I do have a different take on this topic which I wish to communicate with you by the end of this video. This will probably be my most unpopular video on YouTube but hey, here goes nothing. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification. Give this video a like if you like it. Let's see if we can get it also to plus 500 likes like the last video. And a big shout out to my Patreons who support me as always. We are in the month of April, which is the month in which we commemorate, aka we remember the genocide against the Tutsis that happened in 1994. Or is it the Rwandan genocide? Recently, there has been a lot more talks about which terminology to use and the implications of that. In this video, I hope to share with you which terminology you should use and why. First, let me give you a backstory about my personal life. Growing up, I did not have much formal education about this topic or the genocide that happened in Rwanda. I know it sounds crazy to hear, but it's true. It was not because there was no one wanting to teach me. It was mostly because I did not like this whole entire topic. You see, I was born in 1988. My family fled Rwanda in 1994. We bounced around in a few African countries and eventually we landed in the Netherlands when I was about 10 years old. During this whole journey, I noticed many things that were happening and going on, but I didn't understand them until a few years later when I was all grown up. One thing I did know though was that no one liked to talk to me or my siblings about the awful things that just happened in Rwanda. But I knew it had to do with these two words, Hutu and Tutsi. So I grew up hating these two words. I felt like all of our miseries was because of these two words. And when I would meet people and tell them where I was from, they would all ask silly questions like, Oh, Rwanda, ain't that where the tribal war happened? So, which one are you? The Tutu or the Hitu? And I'm like, bruh. Later, I was told that we are all one people now and that the division between Hutu and Tutsi has been made illegal. Personally, I was very happy about this. It made much more sense. When I came back to Rwanda for the very first time since we fled, it was in the year 2009. Back then, Rwanda was very different. I went to the Chigali Genocide Memorial, and to my surprise, I saw in big letters a sign saying genocide against the tutsis i was perplexed i had so many questions i thought the t-word was illegal why is the tutsi specifically and not other people is there also a hutu and the twa memorial i tried asking these questions to my mother but i soon got the feeling that i was asking very uncomfortable questions so i posed those questions i thought let me wait until we get back to europe and then i'll be able to ask her freely Six years went by and I, and I never came back to Rwanda and I had forgotten about those questions. But Rwanda was still calling me. So during my last years of studies, I arranged that to do my a master's internship right here in Chigali. I moved to Rwanda for about nine months and it was only during this long stay in Rwanda that I was able to get complete answers to my questions by asking different sources and different people whom I met in Rwanda. 
of course, majority or randoms. Today, I'm realizing that many young randoms still have the same questions I had back then. And there's still no way to really ask these questions without risking being political about it, making your parents uncomfortable, or being called a genocide denier. I believe that many Rwandans, especially those living outside of Rwanda, are grossly undereducated about this topic. This is going to be my honest and humble attempt to shed a different light about this topic that no one is talking about. Hopefully we can come to an understanding as Rwandans and move forward together to focus on bigger things as rebuilding and maintaining our Rwandan culture. So let's start with the facts. Two thirds of the Rwandans today are born after 1994. The one third of Rwanda that was born before 1994, let's say half of them were too young in that year, just like me, I was about six years old. And the other half were actually old enough to have actually understood what was going on at that point. These are our parents, our aunties, our uncles, our political and military leaders of today. And I think it's fair to say that anyone who is old enough to witness a genocide firsthand must be traumatized some way, one way or another, either through things that happened to them personally or someone else whom they were related to or very close to. Despite all of that happening, these Rwandans who were still alive had to pick up the slack right after the genocide finished. They had to rebuild Rwanda that nearly burned down to the ground. And they had to do so while being traumatized themselves, working with scarce resources and still fearing for their health and safety. These Rwandans are now in their 40s, 50s and 60s. These are also the most influential Rwandans in our Rwandan society. But young Rwandans in their 20s and early 30s are becoming more and more influential. They are getting positions of power in companies, they have resources, they have children of their own and they have an opinion. These Rwandans, however, did not experience the genocide the same way as the older generation did, but they are also traumatized some way through something that's called intergenerational trauma. Basically, they have inherited parts of the pain that came from their parents or people whom they were very close to. Or they were traumatized themselves at a very young age. This is my generation. I call it the rebound generation. No matter how much success we gather in our lifetime, we will never forget the pain we experience personally or through our parents or our fellow Rwandans. It is my generation that is expected to rebound Rwanda to a better future. All Rwandans around the world agree that we want to rebuild Rwanda to become better than it was before. But we are facing some challenges. We are living dispersed in different continents, different countries. We don't speak the same language. We are growing up with different cultures and values. But what connects us all is Rwanda and the pain that happened in 1994. So, how do we call this genocide that happened? Which, by the way, was heavily orchestrated by some white people, whom I will not mention right now, but it was mostly done by Rwandans to other Rwandans. Do we call it the Rwandan genocide? The genocide against the Tutsis? The genocide against the Tutsis and moderate Hutus? This debate has been going on since 1994, according to the speech from the president from last week. Back then, people were even debating whether to call it a genocide or not, because that meant that they had to take some actions. Uh, some people are struggling to call it genocide. Well, today we have another struggle. People are struggling to call it now genocide against the Tutsi. But the problem of definition started way back in 1994. Or just simply naming it what it was. This is how I look at it. First of all, I think it's important to acknowledge that this question can only be answered by Rwandans and Rwandans only. Do you agree? Yes? Thank you. Secondly, within those Rwandans, I think we can agree only those Rwandans who are old enough, who experienced the genocide fully, or had an active role in it, should be the ones to decide how to call it. This is everyone who was born before 1980. Thirdly, of those older Rwandans, the majority of them at least, have decided to call it the genocide against the Tutsis. They have made a law about it and everyone who does not abide by it 
will get some hefty penalties and some jail time up to 25 years. This law is very strict and it's because it is designed by people who actually experienced the genocide against the Tutsis in 1994. That is why I respect it. They know the pain. Lastly, even after 27 years since the genocide against the Tutsis happened, people are still in pain. People are still mourning. Not labeling a genocide the preferred way is just plain insensitive and very disrespectful to other Rwandans. It's like how white people in America started calling for all lives matter when black people were saying black lives matter. Don't do it. And if you really take a good look at these two terminologies, you will see that they don't mean the same thing. I will be the first one to admit that I used to think that by calling it the Rwandan genocide, it was the more neutral way of saying it. But it's not. I wanted to stay neutral because I thought it was safe and I didn't want to hurt or upset anyone. But I was wrong. That is why I am taking a stance. It's like Desmond Tutu said. If you are neutral in situations of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. The bottom line is, if a country which is solely affected by something horrific as a genocide decides to call it a genocide against the Tutsis, who are we to disagree? Who am I to object? And who are you to say anything else? You don't have to agree with something to respect it. To my international viewers, my wonderful people, friends of Rwanda, this is a highly sensitive topic that does not really involve you. However, some of you are so invested in Rwanda by being married to a Rwandan, by having Rwandan children, uh, wanting or already living in Rwanda, and some of you even pay yearly taxes in Rwanda. For you, I have some tips on how to avoid being insensitive and disrespectful about this topic and avoid jail time. Number one, educate yourself about this topic. Don't expect that one random friend of yours or your random partner to know all the answers. Number two, never ask a random to tell about their genocide story. Number three, use statistics and terminology from Rwanda. And lastly, number four, never, I repeat, never ask a random from which ethnicity they come from or used to be. Thank you for watching and an extra thank you to my lovely Patreons for your continued support. This is not an easy topic and there's still a lot of pain revolving around it. If you have any questions, please post them respectfully in the comment section below. I do try to answer all of them, but I might decide not to answer some of them. I will, however, answer all questions from my Patreons. If you see someone writing some disrespectful comment, just comment to them. I hear you and I wish you well. Like I said, this is a very sensitive topic and people are still in pain. I hope you have already subscribed and you have hit that bell notification. Give this video a like, hopefully you can hit 500 plus like like the last video. I would like to see you all in the next video. Muramuche.